Hi, I'm Christina from Proverbs 31 Woman, and I come to you after kind of a break from YouTube, don't I? Um, life kind of just got in the way, and the videos went by the wayside, but um, I'm glad to see I have um, more people watching. That's fantastic, and it encourages me to try to make time to do more, and I, hopefully <laughs> life is calming down a bit, and I'll have more time to do videos. Um, what kind of instigated my going ahead and making this video today was that it was pointed out to me that in my YouTube video on um, how long home canned foods last, I had mentioned that I would do a video about the signs of spoilage when you open up a jar and lo and behold, somebody said, ah, where is that? And I said, oh, it's right. Ooh, I forgot to do it. <laughs> so I'm trying to remedy that today. So when you home can your food, um, a lot of people are concerned about how safe is this? Did I mess up somehow? Hopefully this video will ass assuage those feelings and those fears. Um, the number one rule is that what you can, what you jar should be safe. You can trust it as being safe if you followed a tested proven safe recipe. So where do we find those kinds of recipes? In the United States, any of the modern ball books are an excellent resource. The ball website is very good as well. And so is the website for the home, um, the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Those are really the two top sites. Anything else, um, you know, other countries have more lenient standards than we do. Um, and some of that is because, like, for example, I learned not long ago that in the UK, you can hardly buy a pressure canner. So when people are canning, they're doing high acid foods. High acid foods like fruits, basically, is what that sums up to be. And maybe tomatoes, which depending upon your opinion is a fruit or not. Um, and pickled things. And the reason you can pickle vegetables and water bath can them is that you're adding acidity to them with vinegar. Um, and so their recipes can be maybe more lenient than ours because high acid foods are at much lower risk of spoiling and in particular developing botulism. But here in the United States, we also are canning a lot of low acid foods. Okay, so that's meats, including fish, and vegetables, unless you're pickling the vegetables, and then it's okay to use the water bath canner for the reasons I already stated. So um, that's the deal. So you cannot water bath, say, green beans, and think that's ever gonna be safe. Here's why because botulism cannot be killed with boiling water. It does not matter how long you boil those vegetables and then jar them, they can develop botulism sitting on the shelf because it's already in there and you didn't kill it. Only a pressure canner can reach, what is it, 240 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature the food has to reach for a certain length of time it has to stay that temperature to kill the botulism. So I don't care what anybody else on the internet says, do not water bath your vegetables or your meat. Oh my goodness, I know a few people who do that. <laughs> it's scary. Okay, um, botulism is relatively rare in the United States um, and not a huge amount of the cases actually come from food. But a good percentage of the sicknesses that we, Amer as Americans, get from botulism come from home canned food. But here's the thing. Fortunately, we can go to the CDC's website and see all the reports about botulism over the years and what caused the sickness. And we can see from that that somebody who uses the ball book to can applesauce, like I did here, isn't going to die of botulism. And it's un very unlikely that they're going to get sick from their food from other things as well. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, the cases that happen are people who just throw out the rule book. 
So the three cases that really come to mind, I think they're the most recent cases here in the United States. There was a gentleman who was canning meat and he used a pressure cooker instead of a pressure canner. They are different. You cannot can in a pressure cooker, even if the manufacturer says you can. It has to do with the size of the pot and the pressure that's achieved inside and therefore how heated your food is gonna end up being. So that was his mistake number one. He used the wrong equipment. He didn't try to water bath it though, so I give him kudos for that. Then he thought, oh, this is taking too long. Cause you know, when you pressure can, yeah, generally the processing times are longer than water bathing. And he got tired of it and he thought, oh, the little lids have sealed, they're done. So he pulled it out way early. He pulled out this meat. Then he saw signs of spoilage in the food in the pantry. And instead of throwing it out, he decided, oh, better eat it real quick. So he had three dings against him and he got very, very, very ill and he almost died. And part of the reason he almost died was that the doctors couldn't figure it out. It's so, it's kind of rare for people to get botulism poisoning and they just didn't think about it until he happened to mention, oh, I canned some meat and then ate it. And by the way, it had a bulging lid, you know? So they figured it out and fortunately he was okay. Thank goodness he didn't give that to anybody else though. Okay, the second case that comes to mind is somebody who canned, I think it was pickled eggs. It was eggs anyway. Doesn't matter if they're pickled or not. There is no safe tested recipe for canning eggs. None. That person ended up making a lot of people at a picnic very, very sick. And if I recall correctly, uh, at least one elderly person died. Unfortunately, the people who are most likely to die from bad canning practices are the people you want to protect the most, the elderly and children. So if you give your food to other people that you've canned, please follow the rules. <laughs> and then the third um, story that comes to mind happened this year in 2019. There was a lady who had a bunch of green beans and she wanted to can them and she went on the internet and there were all these people telling her, oh yeah, it's safe, just water bath them for, you know, however long. It's, I think it's some ridiculous thing, like two, three hours, something like that. So she believed it. She found it online. All these people told her they did it and they didn't die, so it must be safe. So she did it. And lo and behold, she poisoned herself. She got botulism poisoning. And she came out publicly and, and you know, said, follow a tested safe canning recipe. That was my problem. Um, so you can see in all three of those most recent inc incidences, the problem was not somebody who followed a ball recipe, for example, and ate it and got botulism. They decided not to follow the rules. And so they got very, very sick and made other people very sick. Um, so, but botulism aside, Let's look at some things that you can look for when you open your jar of your home canned food that will be a sign that you shouldn't eat it. So the very first thing is whether the seal, the lid, is still nice and strong. Is that seal good? I think once in my life I walked into my pantry and I pulled out a jar and the lid was totally loose. I mean, it just lifted off. Ooh, had to throw that out. That was not worth eating, right? That was going to make me sick or somebody else really sick. You should be able to pick up your jar by the lid and it will be perfectly fine. That lid isn't going to come off. That's how strong the seal should be. So if it's a weak seal, you know, you open it up and it just, there's no resistance there. That's probably a good idea to just throw that food out. It's just not worth the risk. Um, now if you're new to canning, that can be maybe hard to judge, but just remember the seal is going to resist. If it doesn't, that's a sign that the food's no good. Um, you can also look for a bulging lid, okay? Um, my husband knows somebody who cans inappropriately, and he'll bring jars of his home canned food places and serve it to people, and the lids are bulging. That is an absolute definite sign that that food is spoiled. It means that gases have built up inside and that food is, I hesitate to say poison. Poison maybe means that you're gonna die, but it's gonna make you really sick at the very least. Um, if you open the lid and you see mold or you see some kind of yeast, 
you should toss that food. In the old days, they used to say, oh, if it's a jam and the top gets moldy, you just scrape off that mold and it's fine. But now we know that even though that mold may not, you know, give you an upset stomach or make you vomit, it can have adverse health effects. So just go ahead and throw it away. Um, cloudiness is another thing. Um, the only, you know, if you have fruit in a jar, it's in a sugar syrup, or you have pickles that are in a brine, that's the kind of thing where you're looking generally for cloudiness. I suppose you might get it on applesauce too. I've never seen that, fortunately, but um, the only little thing to note here is that cloudiness in pickles or anything where you add salt can be caused by the salt. So if you use table salt that has iodine in it, it very definitely will make the water cloudy. So that's why any good recipe will tell you to use canning salt or maybe kosher salt, something that doesn't have the added stuff that's pure salt. It's healthier for you anyway. Um, so, you, you know, because if you use the table salt and you look at it and it's cloudy, how do you know whether it's the salt or whether something's gone bad? Um, if you open the lid and stuff spurts out, liquid spurts out, that is really bad food. Don't eat that. Um, let's see, what else? Sliminess. Also, if it smells fermented, fermented food is great, it's healthy, it's wonderful, but you don't want stuff that you canned to come off the shelf fermented. Um, that means something's growing in it and it, it's something that could make you sick. It's not a controlled fermentation with the proper acidity level in the brine to make the food safe to eat. Um, and finally is smell. Um, when you open it up, smell it. If it smells weird, if it smells sour, if it smells moldy, if it smells anything that like it shouldn't, then throw that food away. It just isn't worth getting sick for. Not at all. Um, some people used to say in the old days, oh, just take that food and boil it for 10 minutes. But you already know that botulism can't be killed that way. So it just isn't worth the risk. It's a small amount of food, really. Just throw it out. Um, remember, too, going back to botulism, that you cannot see it, you cannot taste it, and you cannot smell it. So which is why we go back to the beginning of using tested safe recipes. That's really going to um, make it pretty much impossible for you to get botulism from your home canned foods. Now, what happens if I open up this jar of applesauce that I canned in 2017 and I I think for one of these reasons I've already outlined that it may be spoiled or it definitely is spoiled. The rule of thumb is if it's a high acid food, which is fruit, right, um, you can just throw it away like you would something that's spoiled in your refrigerator. Just throw it in the trash and no special precautions are needed. You just take that jar and put it through the dishwasher or, or sanitize it with bleach if you, if you want to and it's, it's good to go another time. Um, but if it's a low acid food, you really should use some extra precautions because you don't want to spread botulism around. Remember, botulism is much more likely to happen in low acid foods. And um, so if something goes wrong and your seal breaks, for example, um, you should just assume that that jar is contaminated with botulism. Botulism is everywhere. Um, it is not safe to eat. So. What you should do first, as soon as you realize the jar is bad, is put on gloves, rubber gloves, uh, latex gloves. And then you're gonna take your jar, jar, I said, with the food in it, the ring, the lid, whatever is attached to the jar, and you're going to put it in a trash bag, the kind that has the drawstrings, and you're gonna tie up those drawstrings. And then you're going to use whatever tape you have on hand and you're gonna seal that opening. The idea is to contain any botulism in that bag. So, you know, hopefully the bag doesn't break. But then you go ahead and you put that bag in your garbage can. So only put that jar and nothing else and that bag's unlikely to break. Um, you know, people used to sometimes say, well, just throw the food away and then you can bleach the jar and it'll all be fine. But the trouble is botulism spreads really easily. So if you, you know, as you're dumping the contents into the bag, the garbage bag, you may spread botulism spores. As you take the jar to your sink to bleach it, 
you may spread botulism spores all over your sink, all over your faucet handles, your counters, whatever. So it's just, don't do it. It's just not worth it. Jars, none of us likes to lose a jar, but they're relatively inexpensive and it's just not worth poisoning someone over. Um, so when you're done, if you've got that all sealed and you've thrown it into the trash, you take off your gloves and they actually should go in a bag as well. Uh, and then you can wash your hands really, really well in the hottest water you can stand for, um, at, you know, a minute or two. And then you want to clean down, wipe down your counters, anything that came into contact with that jar, maybe the shelf in your pantry with bleach water. And you let that sit there 20 minutes before you wipe it up. And then whatever sponge or towels you used in that cleanup should go into a bag, that bag should be sealed, and you throw it in the garbage. So the idea is just not to spread botulism everywhere. Um, so there you have it. Um, again, just remember, use a test and safe recipe. And to understand that botulism is gonna love low acid foods like your meat and your unpickled vegetables, um, and so special care has to be taken there. So no excuses for getting sick. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope to be doing some more videos in the coming months. We'll see. Um, hopefully life is calming down a little bit here and I can do that. Um, so if you have questions related to canning or other aspects of homesteading, please go ahead and leave a comment and I will see what I can do. I can answer that question if it's a quick and easy one in a comment or I can make a video about it too. So, and if you like the video, I would really appreciate it if you would like it, maybe comment, maybe share, maybe subscribe. <laughs> all right. Thanks a lot. Oh, and I do have more information about botulism and canning and all aspects of homesteading on the blog.